Welcome. We are back. Sound design hangout. It's a different one. <laughs> New location. Um, yeah, I'm doing some house sitting, so... Uh, yeah, I might maybe see if I can find other areas where I can change the setup where I'm at. Because you, um, I don't know anything about vlogging or anything, but apparently, from the little that I know, um, when you can, you know, make your vlogs more interesting with like different backgrounds and different areas, it just makes it more interesting, which of course would be true. Um, but in any event, I kind of like it because I think you kind of know that I have a very minimal, very... Uh, I don't want to say reductionist setup, but, you know, I, I, I try to bring as little as possible and uh, as little, you know, to worry about recording, just enough to get the job done and not to uh, go, you know, too far in any direction in any way. But today um, I'm recording this because I actually want to. <laughs> Which is funny. What, what what does that even mean? Well, I've I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know if you guys have felt any of this, but I've had a little bit less creative energy, and I don't want to just get on here. Whether it's like a SDHO, whether it's a tutorial, I don't want to just like get on here and make something half-assed. You know what I mean? Um, I want it to be like I want to be excited, inspired to make something and you know the inspiration for today's sound design hangout which I don't even know what number it is I'm not even going to guess because <laughs> for the last two weeks um, I really haven't been thinking too much about sound design hangout or even Ableton for that matter I've even been kind of dragging my feet with my 3D artist work with like Blender and stuff but something really interesting, uh, I don't want to say like sped me up and made me really excited or whatever, um, but because I feel like my energy was coming back naturally anyway. I'm trying not to like drink so much coffee, <laughs> um, but it's actually plugins. Um, and trust me, don't worry, guys, we actually won't be using plugins, <laughs> although that's where the um, inspiration comes for this one. And you'll have to hear me out and let me explain. So it's uh, the year 2022. Wow. 222. Two, two. Uh, angel numbers. What does 222 two, two angel number even mean? Um, I think it means you're on the right track. Keep going. No matter what it looks like, if you see 222, two, two, you're doing well despite what it looks like, despite the uncertainty, 222, two, two, keep going. There's a really good reverb on here. I'm actually recording the mic in GarageBand. Don't worry, guys. We'll get to some good stuff soon. Don't worry. I was about to say smash the like, but I'm going to save all that dumb stuff for when I actually start making tutorials. Let's see what Chunky's doing. Oh, hey, Chunky. Hey, Google. Huh. We actually uh, stayed here um, back last year, towards the end of the year, when I was transitioning between living situations. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good place. So in any event... Um, how did I get inspired by a plugin? Well, here's the thing. So I'm actually just gonna minimize this. So all of your plugins are located in the plugins folder. Now maybe you have some plugins, maybe you don't. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Like if you've got a full version of Ableton Live, so you have Ableton Live Suite, you don't need any plugins, unless you do. <laughs> and why would you need any plugins? Because you're like, oh yeah, I want guitar rig, you know? So yeah, you would. 
But what I mean is if you have Ableton Live Suite, you know, which means you've got all of the instruments here, all of the audio effects here, you know, you got all of these Ableton packs, which you probably have more than here. I've got 50 <laughs> available packs. I don't need to download them all. Like, you know, I've got a terabyte of storage. Like, do things get just filled up. I, I don't really need all of this, although I am exploring these more now, finally. But in any event, um, if you have Ableton Live Suite, um, these are all synthesizers, and um, you've got all these audio effects, and you might be asking yourself, why would I even need any like additional stuff other than Ableton? And you really don't. And so that's why I always stayed away from plugins because it was almost like one extra dumb thing. <laughs> Not dumb, but like one extra thing that like I didn't want to um, have to learn about. And not, not because I didn't want to learn, but like I was trying to learn all of Ableton. Like I got Ableton Live 9 Suite right when it came out, which was basically like spring of 2013. We're like over nine years into the future from there. And I'm like still learning every nook and cranny of Ableton. And I, I do I, I do use Ableton quite a lot. So why am I getting into all of that? Well, I'm getting into all of that to say, oh my God, what am I trying to say? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is um, I've, I'm finally starting to like let myself look at plugins. Not because I think I'm missing out, not because I'm FOMOing in, like I would be FOMOing in to like Shiba Inu. <laughs> Which if you're into crypto, uh, don't FOMO into Shibu, Shiba Inu, not financial advice. Um, I'm just messing around. Um, but yeah, don't FOMO into anything. But uh, the reason why I'm saying all of that is because um, I actually have finally gotten to a point where I'm allowing myself to look at things that I pushed out. And I pushed out plugins because I thought, okay, Ableton gives me everything. I've got all the um, instruments, the synthesizers I would need. I got my samplers. I've got my um, FM synthesizers, subtractive synthesizers, wavetable synthesizers. I've got very comprehensible dynamic drum racks. I've got everything I would need. I've got every single audio effect you would ever need. I've got all these samples that I don't even mess around with because I don't even mess around with samples, although we'll be getting into lots of samples eventually here in the future. So uh, tying that all in together, I, you know, I was like on YouTube, you know, out of all the crypto videos and some of the uh, uh, Blender and Ableton videos, there was an Ableton video from a company, Attack Magazine, I think, which they've been a company that I've been following for a long time when I used to be really into like the music producer scene or I don't want to say scene because I'm always alone. I don't I ever go out anywhere. So I don't want to say, yeah, I was part of that scene. It was very crazy in ancient Berlin around those times. Perhaps not as crazy as ancient Egypt, you know, or as they called it back then, Kemet. You know what I'm saying? No, see, I'm not doing <laughs> Why do I do these voices? I don't know. I hope you enjoy it. Um, cheers. But to sort of like move forward here, I saw this like plug-in commercial, not plug-in commercial, it was from Attack Magazine. Um, they just uploaded it. And it was about like a plug-in, like a bass guitar plug-in. Meaning like if you were a music producer and let's say like whatever you were working on, like your your, your project in, um, in, <laughs> in Ableton, can, I haven't done this in a while, can you tell I'm rusty? Um, you would say, oh, I'm trying to make a track and I want like bass guitar and I want it to sound just like bass guitar, like an actual human playing bass guitar. But I don't play bass guitar, not me. Of course not me, of course not me. <laughs> but like, let's say you were saying this, you know, I, I want to play like a bass guitar, I want it to sound like a human and I want like a, a program, I want like a program to, you know, do that for me and to make it actually sound real. And I wanna have like controls over the sounds and everything like that. And I always thought like that was cheating, you know? Um, like I, 
play so like I actually played guitar first like in the first guitar I ever played was an electric guitar um, a Squire not a Fender a Squire Stratocaster that I got in like the early 90s when I was like eight or nine years old um, and I wanted to play like Nirvana I wanted to play Pearl Jam I wanted to play Stone Temple Pilots why because this was like 1994 um, and like I hadn't heard music before, and I heard this, like, headbanger music, like, don't care, like, I was like, wow, that's cool, that's what I want to do, and so I got this guitar, and, um, <laughs> you know, I can play, right, you know, um, not, like, very well, um, or at least not back in the day, um, but, like, I can play an instrument, so my thoughts when I got into, like, music production Ableton my thoughts was if I was ever going to use any type of like a guitar bass guitar thing why not like use myself playing you know like plug it into the audio interface over here I don't know if you can see it um but something about this video made me click on it and the crazy thing was was when it opened up it had like a MIDI editor you know it had a MIDI editor just like here and it looked and I thought no one, nothing would look good like Ableton. You know what I mean? Like you see this, like uh, you know, this be these beautiful bars here. <laughs> you know, and it looked just like this. You know, it's like oh, okay, blah blah blah. By the way, yeah, you push B to get to the pen tool. Okay, I'm just drawing anything. Um, if you were wondering what these bars are, they're sixteenth notes. Okay. Now the most important thing here. Is, is these, these velocities, right? So like I can take this and draw this velocity down, okay? Draw this guy down, keep these high because they're on like the two, the one. Velocities are so important, my friends. So important, okay? Got all this stuff. And so if you're gonna be like playing in MIDI, whether you're like playing on a keyboard, you know, whether you're playing your like laptop keys, which I'll definitely do, or whether you're just like drawing them on, like, okay, gonna click over here, okay, here, okay, all right, okay, what's going on, you know? Um, you have to play the velocities because think about like all, by the way, we're, we're getting somewhere. If something tells me if you're watching this, it's because you know I'm gonna get places and I'm gonna show you great things. Um, I hope, I'm glad my ADHD is not hurting your brain because I know what it's like to watch YouTube videos and be like, yo, get to the point, man. This is ridiculous. I'm wasting all my time here. Get to the point. But you know what I mean? Like who the hell's watching SDHO a million or whatever it's at right now? <laughs> Cheers, if it get to a million. So in any event, um, you gotta play with these velocities. And because if you think of like all of these mini notes as like a note, like think about, let's pretend I have a drum or something or like some sort of thing you can hit or even like a, a piano, like cause it's a piano roll, okay, it's a piano, right? So let's like drop something on here. Let's drop a wavetable. Okay, let's click play. Shift tab. It actually sounds kind of good. Push stop. Push stop. So um, if I like different odd things, so like that sounded good to me. Um, if it didn't sound good to you, <laughs> um, something about music is even if it's like not what you're used to, if it keeps repeating enough, this is just like a music tip that you might find interesting. If it keeps like repeating enough, it will become obvious to the listener whether they like it or not that like that's a thing that's supposed to be happening and continuing. So that's just something interesting. So like right now, if I click this play again, um, let's come over here and let's go to MIDI. Let's go to zero. Let's lower the volume. Now these hits are different depending on where they are. 
So let's like do one here. Now, if you see, I'm gonna drag this velocity down. Listen, you can barely hear it, but now I'll put it up. Can you barely hear it? I'm gonna duplicate, and I'm just gonna take this last one and push zero to like mute it. So I'm gonna go back in here. This velocity is for the ampl am amplitude, basically means like the volume. I'm going to move this guy up. Now I want this to... I'm lowering the frequency. And I'm going to go into... See how it's moving? So like when you hear like higher up velocities, this will like move up a little bit. Let's give it a little bit of resonance. Um, let's give it a filter type. See how, like, so, see these, like, when these go up high, it's, like, moving up high, right? So that's giving it, like, that's giving it, like, an organic feel, right? So let's uh, play with the slider. It's too much, because I don't want it to go that high up. Let's uh, click sub. It's a good way to like give it some thickness. Because sometimes when you play with this stuff, let's lower this a little bit. Nah, that's too much. So, you heard it was like dynamic, right? Let's play it again and I'm gonna turn the dynamicism away. See what, how it changes. Zero this, take away the velocity. They're all the same volume. They're all the same. Now let's give it some more. By the way, when you push that there, or push any of these, you'll stop it. So, um, let's click play again. So, okay, let's get back to the original point here. The original point is, so when are you normally using MIDI clips? Like, one of the reasons why you might use MIDI clips is like for drums or like for melodies like we've been doing. And Unfortunately, you do have to really pay attention to these velocities because like they give it like a real kind of like human-y feel. But you might be like, well shit, like I don't I, I don't have I don't want to know like, you know, um where to like draw these things. Then I gotta click on this note. So then I know I can then move this, or if I drag this note. Like it's kind of annoying. And at the same time, like, you know, like for instance, if we if we click over here, like we have got this blank MIDI track, like we have to like be like, okay, so we're gonna start with F sharp three. And um, I, you know, because it's the first note, I know I want like a high velocity. And then, you know, I'm gonna like, I kinda wanna note here and I wanna make sure like, okay, we're down here in 16th notes. And because it's like, you know, you, you probably want like a little bit of like a lesser velocity because it's on like less of a strong note than when we like come into here, we want that up because it's on the, you know what I mean? Like, like who, who knows that? Like you have, you have to like know about like if you've got beats, like which beats have like a, like a stronger impact. You know what I mean? Um, maybe we just want Ableton to do that for us because we want the dynamicism of the velocities, you know what I mean? But like, we don't have to wanna guess and we don't have to like wanna read like a million articles to finally figure out what like this crap actually means. Cheers. So I was curious and I was like, you know, what would be a way where we could kind of do that? And so that basically brings us to our topic. So see how we're like in here under categories? Let's go to grooves. Let's click some grooves. 
Let's click Calypso. Now, what does this do? Look what it gave us. See these velocities? <laughs> There's really nothing you can do in Ableton other than these grooves where you can literally just like drop it down and get these velocities. And that's what makes it sound real. Like, let's click play. Can you hear that? Why do you think it stopped playing? Loop. Shift tab. Hear that dynamicism? So like, so like, see this? Why don't we do that? What is this called? What is this thing called? We want to modulate it. What is this called? Or we want to modulate with velocity. What is this called? It's called oscillator one position. Play around with it. You can go negative too. By the way, if you when you when you scroll down, if you if you hold shift, um, it'll uh, yeah. I'm gonna double click to minimize this. I'm gonna give us more compression, lower down the threshold until I get some gain reduction here. I'm gonna take up the ratio. I'll leave it on two two two. Oh shit two two two. any of these to stop. Wonderful. So uh, what do we just do here, friends? By the way, we are friends here, right? Okay, so let's uh, zoom in here. So this allowed us to do something that we normally can't do, which is, let's just pretend we're trying to do a thing. Okay, because there's a million ways. I remember even dude, even back when I bought my Ableton Live in 2013 from an actual massive music store in the United States, back when you would do that, shout out if you were even alive in 2013. <laughs> so they would say about Ableton, oh yeah, you can do anything. You, there's, you can do anything you want to do like in a million ways. But um, if you want to like get all of this, like straight out the gate, like you don't want to, you know, play in your own things. You don't want to like adjust velocities because it's so much work. Like here we got like a two bar clip. We got two bar loop and we got these and we get this really good sound that's dynamic. It sounds real, like a real human's playing it because it's got these velocities, right? So... What we can do, because like right now with, with these grooves, they're only gonna play one note. So if we come back, shift tab, why don't we make it play different notes? So this was the quickest way that we were able to get velocities to give us a dynamic movement. Now we want different notes. We don't want them to all be C. So what do we do? Shift tab, we go back into here, we go to MIDI effects, we go to random, and uh, right down here, add. I'm gonna keep it on add because I want them to stay um, the note that they are. Let's click play. You're gonna hear the same thing. Look over here, okay? Move up the chance, you're gonna see a change. It sounds crappy, why does it sound crappy? Because it's random notes. We wanna lock them to scale, let's put a scale, let's click this. And let's go to a minor because we love minor because we've got so much emotion inside that we need we need minor. So check it out. Let's lower some of this sub. I'm gonna drop a pitch. And just put it up. I feel like it's going too low. If you put the chance all the way down, you're just hearing this one note, right? When you hear, right, see it? You can hit this again and like, right, let's do minor Hungarian. It's a little bit different, huh? 
Let's go back. All right. So what will we do? Let's take it off basics, put it on complex. Let's change the bass, put it in a different key. Nah, I don't like that. All right, now let's um, right click and insert a MIDI track. Let's um, open up the I.O. MIDI from Wavetable. Make sure it's on post. Make sure it's record enabled and record. Now it's gonna record these notes. And look, it's recording these velocities too. How wonderful. Now let's go back into Wavetable here. And uh, let's go to buy. So instead of like either playing that note or playing ones above it with the add, buy is gonna make it do above and below. So if we go into sub, it's only gonna play that note and below. And look. Yo, smash a like if you like that generative music. Apparently a lot of you do. That's the majority of the people that find their way to my channel, I think. Look at all these like beautiful MIDI notes. So now we're gonna go back, shift tab, um, go back here, and we're gonna put it on buy, which is gonna do the same thing above and below. But we're gonna try to do it in a musical way. Let's push the scale up so we can choose between two octaves. Um, too much, let's go back. Let's play with the warp. Let's play with the fold. Shift to make it uh, smaller. Let's double click this. Uh, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna turn off the fold. Zero. Um, uh, let's get a chorus. Chorus. Smash a like if you think chorus is very underrated. It is. Answer, it is. Chorus. Turn down the dry wet. Let's uh, turn down the rate. Um, so like, look, like it's all recording. So we can just like push stop. So, um, why was that important? I'm uh, inserting a audio trick. Why was that important at all? I think it's very important. This is a song I made. Maybe I'll let it be the lead out. This was a song, or song, I don't, song, what, even, what is like a song anyway, you know? So, um, let's see here. Like, look at all that. Like that was all just generated. Like, can you imagine like a guy who's like, or a gal who's like, yo, I'm gonna learn everything about Ableton. I'm gonna generate these MIDI patterns on my keyboards and my my sample pads, and I'm gonna know it this well. Whereas like Ableton could just do this all for you with all of these velocities. So it's like dynamic. And the interesting thing is, is that like, out of all the things that like we've been doing on here, um, out of all the things that we've been doing on here, we haven't really had a way to be like, give me some velocity, you know, give me some uh, rhythmic 
variety that's not on beat. So if we click on Calypso accent and we zoom in, look at, look. See how these aren't on the beats? They're slightly off. Okay. That's what gives it its feel. Like if you were a computer, you would have it right here, okay? But you don't. So I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be completely honest with you. Drums, which if, if you're doing drums in MIDI, you're like, you're doing this. Um, you're adjusting velocities. You are, and the annoying thing is, is it takes so damn long. Now, in this time, I've changed to a guy that basically just listens to ambient music. Like I do mess around with drums and I put them on things in my own compositions when they're necessary, but like, it's the longest, most annoying thing. And I'm like, yo, I need like velo I need like dynamic velocities right out the gate. So like that plug-in thing was like, yo, here's a bass guitar. And I was like, oh, that sounds like me plucking along. And it had all of these velocities. It um and it allowed you to be like, okay, let's move this thing like slightly off. You know what I mean? Let's move it like slightly off. Um and it also had like things to adjust these notes. So um, I'm gonna be exploring this more, like ways to take things, ways to like, cause like we need, we know we need velocities, but um, we, we know we need velocities to give it that like rhythmic, like that bouncy kind of thing, but we don't necessarily want to be like drawing them in by ourselves. Because here's the thing, like, you know, if I wanna open up Ableton and make something, I don't wanna be like, Hold on. And I'm like, okay, this kick drum, we need a little bit lesser velocity. Okay, and then um, the one before it is on a, a stronger beat, so we want stronger velocity. You know what I mean? That It's a completely different way of like looking at it. It's a completely different way of processing, basically, with your brain. So I don't want any of that in these productions. So I need to find a way to like generate quickly. And I don't really necessarily want to just use drum breaks and like chop them, although I may do that. And I think I'm going to be getting more into drums and creative ways we can chop up these samples and do all of this good stuff. So I hope this was interesting. I hope you got where I was going with this and I hope you learned something new and I hope that like the things that we covered kind of show you that like, okay, like we can do different things that allow us to get like dynamic, moving, dare I say somewhat, somewhat human kind of patterns and we can alter their melodic content and we can constrain it to make it melodic, make it fun. I hope you had a good time. I hope you're enjoying yourself. We're back and I think I might walk around this house and maybe find a different area, if at all possible, to record the next one. Okay. I think we're gonna be playing right, around well, with like recordings, sounds like amazing. found sounds, found sound, field recording, basically the same thing. So we might as well. And um, okay. yeah, I'm excited to play around with that because I'm finally starting to get a little bit of creativity, a little bit of movement back. If you are having a good time, let me know. Keep plugging in. Um, we got a lot of great things. I hope you didn't miss me too much. Chances are you probably didn't. Um, much love. Take care. Okay.